Hey guys, welcome back. Um, so, I've taken a kind of a break, or a brain break anyway, uh, since the last video. So in this video, I am actually have a plan <laughs> for the get-go, as you know if you watched the last video. So in this one, I'm going to finish the generic tactics deck, and I'm going to look at the non-combat unit characters for uh, the Starks. And the other videos, if you want that, sort of improvised <laughs> the uh, um, unit attachment and characters and commanders. Uh, yeah, for the stocks. And I'm going to do some more structured stuff on the other factions. Um, yeah, so I put on some uh, 90s nostalgic music where I didn't have to use my brain. It was good. And I just powered through painting all the base colors on my archers, washed two of them, the first layer anyway. So I'm going to wait for them to dry so I get a little bit of time to look through some cards and then I'm going to wash while I read towards the end I think. Now this video shouldn't be that long but then again it's a lot of brainy stuff. I'm still a little bit numb <laughs> but let's try it. Oh. Alrighty then, let's see. And yeah, these will be unscripted, as always. So, I think I'm going to start with the stuff that has nothing associated with it. So, that means characters that isn't a commander, that's an SU. So that means I'm saving Holland Reed for the last. Right. Um, see yeah here we go so Sansa I feel like I'll start with her because I'll probably have to end with her uh, since I'm starting this way uh, because of her ability so we can use her as a recap before we end the video so her ability is uh, repeating the words once per game anytime so I, literally anytime uh, search your tactics deck or discard pile for any one card and add it to your hand. Shuffle your tactics deck afterwards. So you, yeah, of course you shuffle it because uh, because otherwise you know what's coming. So yeah, it's great, and that's basically shuffle through this and your commander's abilities. So that one card you really need, she can get that. And she is three points, just for reference. Uh, let's do Catelyn next. So Catelyn Stark, family duty honor. And she influences when she, uh, when this unit claims a tactics zone, attach this card to a combat unit until the end of the round. And Catelyn is quite good. What Catelyn does is um, when she influences a unit, first of all, she removes one condition token from them. That's good. Especially if you're playing against stuff like the Boltons. Uh, I feel like that's going to be good. Uh, while influencing a unit, that unit always attacks with the highest attack die value. So uh, so that's great. Especially if she claims like the... Uh, mm, nah, never mind. Some complex stuff. I don't want to get into it. But you could have like a second character and grab uh, the uh, combat space on the tactics board and then get a second free attack with the highest amount of dice to like maximize that. Um, yeah, anyway, let's go to the next one. Roderick Cassell, combat veteran. Um, his ability is combat expert or martial expertise. When you claim the combat zone, one enemy combat unit becomes vulnerable. That's like his theme with vulnerability. Um, he also influences, uh, so influence when this unit claims a tactics zone. Attach this card to a combat unit until the end of the round. Uh, okay, so what his influence does is while influencing a unit, that unit mainly attacking critical blows. So rolls six, deals two hits. So overall, just Good. Uh, actually, let's look at the points. Catelyn is four points. 
and Roderick is also four points. I like both. Um, I think Roderick is a few percent stronger, but not by much. They're both good, of course. Mm. Nah, no, nah, I'd say they're equally strong. Yeah. Okay, Eddard Stark, Warden of the North, his non-combat non -combat, uh, character. Bravery in the face of death. Eddard begins the game with three order tokens on him. When a friendly unit passes a morale test or successfully charges, you may remove one order token from Eddard to restore up to two wounds to that unit. If that unit has only one remaining rank, restore d3 plus one wounds. So that's... Mm, we can only do it three times. Mm. Charges or morale test. It's, it's decently flexible. He's four points. Um... Might be mm. He's probably good with Brendan as a commander. Just like really strong defensive stuff, flexible defensive stuff. So that's cool. Um save the generic tactics deck for last and let's start with looking at Howland Reed. He's so weird. He's kind of one of my favorite characters, but there's like nothing about him, even in the books or in the series. Maybe that's why I like him. He's just not flashy. I, I do like that. Anyway, let's look at his. Um, so he's the first commander that's not on the table. So let's see what he does. Hunter's Guile. Influence. When this unit claims a tactic zone, attach this com card to a combat unit until the end of the round. While influencing a unit, that unit suffers minus one to hit, so you attach this to an enemy, obviously. I mean, there's nothing preventing you to do it on your own, but I'll be dumb. So, uh, so yeah. Can make something a little less good, and I assume if you grab the tactics slot, or the, the one with the letter, then you can also give them weakened. <laughs> like, then they'll, whatever, they'll, they'll have rubber swords at that point. Okay, uh, so, it's, it's eh, but of course he's free. And I guess there's the added bonus of having a commander not on the table, is that you always have his ability. You can't wipe him out by wiping out the unit. Anyway. Let's look at his specific uh, cards right, right here. And they say, Cranach Traps. Uh, when an enemy unit activates, that unit suffers minus two movement, uh, this activation. If they are within long range of a Cranach Man unit, they also become weakened. Mm. The Kranachman Warden doesn't transfer a unit to Kranachman. I think we'll have to wait for the... I think I think there's a Kranachman unit announced, the Kranachman Trappers or something like that. So I'll have to wait for that. So he's not... I mean, it, it's decent, but it's not... It's not good. It's great against Cavalry because they suffer the minus two twice since it's during an activation. Uh, okay, Bog Devil Ambush. When an enemy combat uh, unit activates, that unit suffers D3 plus two automatic hits. That's that's nice. If they're within long range of a Kranachman unit, they suffer minus one to defense save rolls for this hit. Okay, it's really good. Again, I really want some Kranachman, but I'm not able to. So. I feel like he's going to be great, but he's not too good right now since 
you can't really trigger the special abilities. You can only trigger the generic part of it. So you're leaving a lot on the table. Okay. The threat unseen. Um, when a damaged enemy unit activates. Okay. That's new. When that enemy must take a panic test and suffer minus one to their roll per destroyed rank. If they're within long range of a Kranachman unit, uh, they also become panicked. Again, can't really get m most out of him before you have at least one unit of that on the table. And I'm 99% sure the tracker doesn't change allegiance. Let's. I'm just going to find him real quick just to put that question to bed. Why is he not here? Oh, there he is, Crankman Warden. Yeah, nothing about that. I thought so. Okay. I'm sure there'll be a Mira and a Jojen Reed at some point that also does that. Anyway. We are down to just looking at the generic deck, and I will quickly make sure I only have one of each on my hand. Should have prepared that beforehand, but whatevs. Okay, let's start with Northern Ferocity. When a friendly unit makes a melee attack, this attack gains Sundering, minus one to the save rolls. Um, if the unit has only one remaining rank, it also gains Vicious. Mm -hmm. If you control the combat zone, the defender becomes vulnerable. So it's like triggering Stark Fury plus some more stuff, kinda. Well, not really. But yeah, it's good. Straight, straight up good. Uh, the North remembers when a friendly unit is destroyed. Target a friendly unit and remove one activation token from them. They may be activated again this round, or they may restore up to three wounds if you control the combat uh, spot. They gain both effects instead. So that's, that's incredibly good, obviously. <laughs> Much more to say, but it's, it's, it's good. It's really good. Um, I think I got caught off guard by that at one point. But now I won't. Now I know. Anyway, sudden charge. When you claim any zone on the tactics board, you may replace that zone's effect with... Here's the effect. One friendly unit may make a free charge action. If you control the movement uh, thingy, any enemy they successfully charges also becomes vulnerable. Again, charging out of nowhere is something that is hard to anticipate, so it's incredibly good for obvious reasons. Um, swift advance. When a friendly infantry unit activates, that infantry unit may make a free maneuver action. Uh huh. If you control the movement, that unit also gains plus one speed and may reroll any charge distance. Uh, okay, so the infantry basically becomes cavalry. That's what that does. In a sense. So uh, that's cool. You can uh, you can do some nasty stuff with this. Okay, direwolves fervor fervor. Yeah, let's go with that. English, hard. Uh, when a friendly unit suffers a panic test, that unit gains plus one to their panic test roll and an additional plus one for each destroyed rank. If you control the combat space, one, en one enemy engaged with that unit also suffers d3 wounds. Again, just plain useful. Not game-breaking or anything, but just plain useful. Okay, 
Uh, devastating impact. When a friendly unit charges, uh, that unit may reroll their charge distance die. Good. And their attacks deal plus two additional automatic hits. Great. Control the movement, slow, so whatever. That unit automatically counts as having rolled a six under charge distance. And they deal plus two automatic wounds instead of hits. So great, great, great card. And finally, winter is coming. <laughs> Poetic. Uh, when a friendly unit declares a charge, your opponent may not play tactics cards or use orders for the remainder of this turn. Yeah, if you control the combat slot, any enemy they successfully charge become panic. This card is just utterly devastating. It it can turn the game around if you manage to play it at the right time. Sometimes you don't know if you played it at the right time unless your opponent tells you. But I played Lannisters and this was played against me. And I had so many things lined up. And as soon as he read this card aloud, I was like, okay, you just won the game. Because I was down and I was about to turn it around and then this just blocked me. He didn't know that that was going to happen, but he basically crushed the last bid I had in my tank. It was just, nope. Uh, but yeah, you might not see that you get a payoff from this card, but it can be so utterly good. Yeah. Uh, and it's because it's everything no orders no tactics card it's not that unit it's everything oh so bad well it's so good anyway i guess i got through all of that in 17 minutes it felt quick it wasn't oh well um yeah i guess i'll go through the same kind of thing with the other factions now that there's a bit of a format and probably split it into a couple more sections. Not that I know what I'm doing. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and uh, see you guys in the next video. And if you're watching this as soon as it comes out, it'll probably... If there are any videos after this, it'll probably be a little while before the next batch comes because I'm going away on a holiday for a little while and uh, I'm not going to be making any videos while I'm away. So yeah, that's a thing. Take care guys and uh, see you guys in the next video.